Welcome to the British Home Front in the First World War. This series was recorded at the University of St Andrews in June 2018 to accompany a conference marking the contribution by the peoples of the British Isles to the national war effort. In this final podcast, we hear from Never Such Innocence, which uses poetry, art and song to engage children and young people across the world with the centenary of the First World War. My name is Lady Lucy French. I am the chief executive and founder of an organisation called Never Such Innocence. Its purpose is to give children around the world the opportunity to play their part in the centenary of the First World War. And today we're here at St Andrews getting fantastic young people thinking about what the centenary means to them, what commemoration means to them, and what commemoration means in the 21st century and moving forward. Would you like to say something? On this microphone about what you think about the Scottish Women's Hospital. Are you going to be shy? No. I think well done because they stood up for themselves and realised that they needed to do this because they shouldn't have themselves belittled. Does anyone need more time to write their inscription? Right. We've been asked to commemorate these people and how we're going to remember them and I think it's quite good that we're doing that because they've affected how much better it is for women today compared to then. I want to remember my great great granddad because he fought in the Navy in the First and Second World War. And my great-granddad also fought in the Second World War as well. And my granddad's brother fought in the Navy. I would like to remember the horses because they fought in the war as well to save lives. I'm going to remember some of the dogs because they're like a man's best friend. I would just remember everyone for everything because everyone really played a part in it. My name is Eleanor. I'm part of the Never Such Innocence team. We work with children and young people aged 9 to 16 commemorating the First World War. The group we've been working with today, we spoke about what commemoration means to us. So this group came up with celebrating people who have died. They thought that stories were quite important, learning about people's stories. Sacrifice was a word that recurred quite a lot. Thinking about people who fought and people who died, so commemorating everybody. We spoke also about how we commemorate, so we thought of things like having a minute silence, having a war memorial, visiting somebody's grave, keeping a photograph of someone, having parades, having events, military events, community events. We've learned also about people from our local area, so the Scottish Women's Hospitals, about animals that fought in the First World War, so remembering the dogs and the horses who took part. We've also learned about soldiers from all around the world, so we've learned about one particular soldier in the Indian Army who was incredibly brave and rescued a comrade in a wheelbarrow, and we've written an inscription to remember him called Wheelbarrow Soldier. My great-grandfather was Field Marshal Sir John French. He led the British Expeditionary Force at the start of the First World War. Growing up, I heard lots of stories about him, and so he was very much a part of my childhood. When we started thinking about the centenary, I thought it was very important that children were given a strong and important voice. Our children are the custodians of the future and have as much right as anybody else to have their views heard. My great-grandfather was quite a controversial character, and that's been really interesting, actually. I've learned an awful lot more about him and his career. The thing that I always remember being told is that his men absolutely loved him, and I think that's actually very, very important. Of course, the First World War, there'd never been anything like it before, and so I think he was in a pretty difficult place. We have just finished a really inspiring session with a wonderful group of young people from St Andrews. I'm going to read a few of the things that they've said. We asked a question, do you think commemoration is important and why? And somebody's written, yes, commemoration is very important. 
In fact, I think we should do more because everyone suffered for our generation and it's a bigger deal than we believe and we didn't see how bad it was. Somebody else said, yes, it's important to commemorate because it's showing respect. It shows that people risk their lives for us. Somebody else has said yes, because they can still be known. And I think children do think that these people that made huge sacrifices 100 years ago are still relevant today. They could have said, actually, no, we think a minute's silence boring. But they haven't. And I've been really touched by that. Another question that we had was, can you think of any other events that we should commemorate? Somebody's written, I think we should remember everyone that has fought in wars and has found cures for diseases and illnesses. That was quite a theme. I had a little chat with a young boy who was talking about how his grandmother had died of cancer and he thought it was really important to remember those that had died, but also those that were trying to find cures. Someone's here written, we should remember the Soviet Union rising in World War II. He said his dad was a sergeant in the Soviet army and my dad's dad was a lieutenant. It's important to remember what they did during that conflict. Oh, this is an interesting one. I think we should remember all people that died for no reason or for their country and to remember the Manchester Arena bombing. That is very, very pertinent, that young people that 10 to 11 age bracket are really thinking about potential peers that have been lost in recent times. Never Such Innocence has tried very much to get children to think about the broader picture of everybody involved in this conflict. I think children particularly have picked up on some of the things that adults perhaps overlook. We don't think so much about the horses and the dogs and the pigeons, but they do, and they've written some extraordinary work. A lot of work has come through about the role of women. I think it's been very striking the way children do respond. A winner of one of the poetry competitions wrote about the First World War from the perspective of a hornbeam tree. We asked children what they thought was important about commemoration and what they thought they might like to change. Somebody's written that there should be more than one or two minutes silence. It should be more like 10 minutes. The same individual has said that we should do more work about it in schools and we should tell the truth when we are learning about it and don't sugarcoat it. Very interesting that they want to hear the facts about what happened. These young people constantly astonish me in how they deal with some really difficult, difficult topics. People should have a minute of silence because the people in the war had to work and not see their family and we do get to see our family. Mm. So we're being really thankful for what we have today. You have been listening to the British Home Front in the First World War. The podcast series was made possible thanks to the generosity of John Cawthorne and the 1926 Foundation. The conference was supported by the Department for Digital Culture, Media and Sport and the Scottish Government. It was a Chrome Radio production for the University of St Andrews with music by the pipes and drums of the Royal Scots Dragoon Guards. The producer was Katrina Oliphant, with sound design by Chris Sharp. The series editor was Professor Sir Hugh Strawn. And that brings us to the end of our series on the British Home Front during the First World War. We hope you have enjoyed listening. 